So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here. It's a very interesting conference and I would like to introduce to you now our activities in going forward for 3D printing of medicines in the future. We even call it digitalizing the production of pills or tablets because we think this is really a very different approach into the market and I will show you in my last slides what we mean by that. So I'd like to show you how we came to that area what we are currently doing and what is then in the end our vision. But maybe first, let's uh, see uh, where this idea came from. I'm working for Merck, that is a German company, family owned. It is, we call it the oldest pharmaceutical company in the world. We celebrated in 2018, our 350 years birth uh, birthday. We are active in three business areas that are depicted here in these uh, pinky areas, that is healthcare, life science and performance materials. I'm working in a central innovation unit that is tasked to generate new business for MAG that is either combining expertises of these expertises that we call innovation between, or that is outside of the existing strategies of our businesses and that is what we call innovation beyond. In fact, this is in some way both because we are combining here expertises from our life science business in excipients with the certainly drug development expertises in healthcare. And we are also developing the next generation production technologies that is even beyond what is done in current technologies in life science and healthcare. Uh, the Central Innovation Unit is uh, certainly dedicated to first establish innovation culture in the, in the uh, organization, but is also, as I tried to describe also in the previous slide, dedicated to bring business forward into uh, the market. And therefore, I'm in the light blue bubble here. That is, that is meaning that we build a strong internal innovation project portfolio. In fact, we are with this really going forward to the market. We are in the commercialization phase of this activity already. That probably as a, a kind of introduction where this project or this activity, this business came from. Our vision for this is that we really 3D print medicine in the future. In some way, really substituting some of the technologies that are currently used in that say the classical way of producing pills, tablets, we would like to revolution some, revolutionize a, a bit this production environment for tablets in pharmaceuticals. And certainly this whole area gives a, a possibility to, de to digitally design and vary tablets. And I think this community is quite aware of that. But with that, you are also enabling a digitalized, decentralized production because you are uh, trying to print, print them in the markets, uh, the medicine. I will show you later what I mean by that. But let's uh, dive into this. I think I don't have to explain to this community this slide, uh, but I want to certainly mention that all these technologies have their application in this area. Um, on the left side, uh, the FDM uh, technology, you heard a lot already. We uh, heard from Apricia around the BIDA jetting. I'm going to focus more on selective laser centering now. And I will show you in the next slides why we are focusing in this particular activity uh, that I'm uh, showing today on laser sintering. But uh, I want to re-emphasize all these technologies will have their applications, we think, in the future. It's just that we have chosen for our way forward the right side. And the reason being is here is somehow described in uh, this table. If you compare the different existing and let's say future 3D 3D printing technologies in this area for pharmaceutical production, you certainly have to compare certain properties like appearance, mechanical properties, the cost per tablet, the throughput that you can achieve, batch sizes you are considering, and so forth in the different technologies. And maybe I have it right or wrong, but let's say in, in, in some way the numbers presented here are right. Then uh, we have chosen the laser sintering powder bed fusion technologies because the appearance, the throughput, the cost per pill and the time for formulation development 
is somehow in the sweet spot for the application we have chosen, and that is clinical trial supply. Um, and certainly we have looked into this in more depth. Um, I don't want to show here the technical details, but in our technical studies, we could clearly show that using this technology, the shape is in the specification that is required from the regulatory bodies, that the roughness of the surface is acceptable, acceptable that the mass of the tablets is in the expected specifications, as well as the, as the hardness of the tablets, the mechanical uh, stability. Then uh, what is very important in the pharmaceutical setting is certainly that the active pharmaceutical ingredient, the API is uniform distributed in the different uh, tablets produced and it should not be degraded. So no side products should be, should be uh, visible in this production process. And since our laser centering approach is also using low temperature um, around 60 degrees, uh, we also see no degradation of the active pharmaceutical ingredient using laser centering in our approach. What is also then important is certainly that the dissolution profile is acceptable. And when we tested this in comparison to uh, selected uh, uh, normal, let's say fabricated, and normally produced uh, by tablet pressing um, tablets, you could see that the dissolution profile is quite comparable to the traditional manufacturing methods used. So therefore, the, uh, it was a decision to go forward with this uh, technology. And uh, we think that by now uh, using this technology setting, we can really uh, avoid a lot of, uh, of um, uh, complexity in the normal production process. I think uh, you know it probably that there is a, a, a plethora of different steps used in the traditional tablet manufacturing process from milling the different excipients, APIs and powders to blending them together in a formulation and make a granulation of these so that the size distribution is in a way that there's no separation of the four powders and that you can really work with them in the classical tablet pressing machines. Then you have to lubricate this whole formulation powder. Then comes the classical pressing of the tablets in a pressing machine, in a tableting machine. And in the end, you have a coating of these tablets still to do. We think that with our technology uh, approach, we can really do it in a three step approach in some way, like mixing, printing, done. You just have to mill and blend the powders into a formulation. And in our experience, the uh, formulation is much uh, easier, much less complex. It only contains less uh, of these excipients uh, for the whole process. Then comes the printing process in the machine. And that is um, kind of, uh, the a picture from our machine that we have in our premises. It is a industrial size machine. It's not a tab, not, not a tabletop machine. It's it's really something that is uh, you know meant to be in, at an, in a, uh, used in an industrial setting. And then we still have because the roughness of the tablets is just not acceptable by the patients in the end. We still have to do the coating of the machines like in the classical um, um, printing uh, the tablet manufacturing process. But as you can see, a lot of steps are avoided. That means run up losses of the formulation is not there. Means we have less consumption of the very expensive active pharmaceutical ingredient in the clinical development. Just to give you an impression, a kilogram of active pharmaceutical ingredient in these early phases of drug development, where the synthesis process, the production process of the API is not optimized. A kilogram of the API can, can easily cost up to 200,000 euros per kilogram. And if we save here a few kilograms in the process, a classical cl uh, phase one production is con consuming about 10 kilograms of active pharmaceutical ingredient. And we think we can work with three to five kilograms. Then you can see already a benefit to our customers here in using less API for the formulation development and the production of the clinical material. Therefore, we think there is a sweet spot of this technology approach from throughput, from cost, from saving time in uh, formulation um, in clinical phase one and phase two. 
and it also supports the need of the pharmaceutical industry to be really fast in man with uh, their drug development programs. Um, you know, this is the proof of, of the pudding for the pharmaceutical industry. You can test your new drug in a patient. And uh, if you come quicker to this point, if you come cheaper to this point, this is taking a lot of risk out of your, of your uh, programs because you should know that only one in 10 programs progresses from phase one to market. And even in phase two, it's only one in six. And in phase three, it's one in three. So if you can make this cheaper, if you can make this quicker, it really supports the need of the pharmaceutical industry. So I mentioned this already. So in our hands, and certainly this depends on the particular problem you have in front of you. It depends on the particular active pharmaceutical ingredient. It, it depends on the particular um, uh, you know, formulation challenge you have. But let's say generalized uh, is uh, kind of the, foreign, the following uh, true. We can save up to 50% of the active pharmaceutical ingredient in our processes. We can save up to 60% of the time needed for the reformulation that is normally done. So in the normal procedures, the pharmaceutical industry is doing a first formulation of the tablet for phase one, then a reformulation for phase 2A, a reformulation for 2B, a reformulation for phase three. We think that, can we, that we can use the very same formulation, the very same production process during the different clinical phases and therefore save this time in formulation development. And you can imagine that in, in a GMP environment, the, the, the formulation time of people is quite also an expensive, uh, an expensive resource. So therefore the overall saving is up to 70% in the clinical development. And uh, certainly we discussed this already in different ways in this Congress. Uh, we think that uh, this is an excellent way forward for digitalizing the whole uh, industry. The properties of a tablet can be just digitally uh, adjusted. You just change the file on your computer. And with that, you can, uh, you can adjust the API dosage, the tab by the tablet volume, the shape. Uh, you can uh, you know, twist the dissolution by using different laser powers and speed. You can certainly influence the with the irradiation pattern in your powder bed how this is exactly done. Um, and yeah, the batch size is also easily adjusted by just using different sizes of chambers or just using different you know, um, uh, ways of, of, of producing the, the pills. And therefore, tablet properties like appearance, content, purity, dissolution, and hardness is all easy to adjust in a file. And with that, I think this opens up a very different way of thinking about pharmaceutical production. Today, most pharmaceutical companies are planning a big plant in their headquarters. They are producing the pills there and they are distributed over the world. We think with this technology, we can easily change this, this picture and place the printers in the market with the market authorizations, with the development of the markets, we would then scale this uh, with the printers. That is certainly not applicable today with the throughput we have in hand for the blockbuster indications, but is something that uh, you know is certainly applicable to smaller indications, oncology indications or orphan indications absolutely also in the near future. So our offer then to the market is clearly here that we have a GMP printer or GMP environment with our formulation exper expertise at Merck. The customer can come with the API challenge and we develop in our, we call it one zero met from one zero met for digital medical medication uh, service, the clinical trial supply and later on also certainly depending on the need of the market, the commercial supply. And we also foresee that if this technology is accepted by the market, has proven that it is, can, can really deliver uh, the, the right medicine in the right way, that then also we sell printers to our customers. 
I am stopping here and uh, happy to take questions from the audience.